Hi, my name is Johan Blumhardt. I'm a sales engineer for WatchGuard Technologies. Today we're going to cover MFA, multi-factor authentication, and how you can get started very easily. Let's take a few minutes and discuss overview of AuthPoint and some of the main components that make up AuthPoint. AuthPoint is backed by WatchGuard Cloud. This includes management, authentication, and logs and reports, and much, much more. We have the AuthPoint mobile app. This includes our main authenticator for AuthPoint tokens, as well as support for additional third-party tokens. You can customize or rename tokens. And one of the differentiating factors as well is that you can back up or migrate tokens as you need to. We also have the AuthPoint Windows and Mac logon app. So this is gonna provide online and offline protection for your mobile devices, such as your laptops. Then we also have the AuthPoint Gateway. This includes your corporate network uh, gateway. It's going to be a lightweight uh, installation file that you install on-premise, and that's gonna provide your Active Directory synchronization or your LDAP synchronization, as well as your password um, verification. So no passwords are being transmitted to the cloud. We simply use that agent to do password verification. If you're looking to do Azure support, Azure Active Directory, no problem. We also have you covered there. Additionally, that also acts as Radius proxy. So whatever uses Radius, whether it be a Firebox or an additional third-party firewall, we can include that support and back it by AuthPoint. And then we have the AuthPoint agents. This includes tight integration with third-party uh, integrations and that or applications, and that also includes API as well as SAML support. Let's talk a little bit about the AuthPoint app and some of the main features. So it is a mobile token. Most people carry around their cell phone. So as they carry around their phone, they don't have anything additional to carry. It also has three authentication features in one. We have a time-based uh, one-time password to support legacy applications. We also have a push-based authentication. That's gonna be your best user experience. We also have a QR code based authentication for offline authentication. A multi-token app. So we can support social media apps, we can support additional th third party apps in there, no problem. And that is all married to your device DNA. So you, don't, you can't clone your tokens, they are completely unique to that phone. As I mentioned before, you can back those up or migrate those without a problem. And then you also have the additional um, ability to extend that security posture by tying in mobile biometrics. So Samsung, iPhone, you can use facial recognition or touch ID. If you're looking for hardware tokens, we have that support as well. As you look at rolling out your first MFA implementation, I have a few tips I would like to share with you. So first and foremost, log into WatchGuard Cloud, create that group and the access policy, make sure that your users are in there, create an IDP portal, and make sure that that user can log in and that you have received that push request on your phone and that you've successfully logged into the IDP portal. This is critical before you start looking at leveraging MFA on your desktops and you can't log in as that user. Let's get started by logging into WatchGuard Cloud. First, go to watchguard.com. From there, click on login on the top right corner. If you don't have a WatchGuard account, you can easily create an account by clicking on and following the steps and create an account. I'm gonna go ahead and log into my WatchGuard account now. Once you've successfully logged into WatchGuard.com, go to My WatchGuard and WatchGuard Cloud. Once you've logged into WatchGuard.com, hover over My WatchGuard and go to WatchGuard Cloud. When you've successfully logged into WatchGuard Cloud, you'll notice you've arrived at the dashboard. This includes any important alerts that you might want to notice. Also includes any denied push notices, users, and license information. From there, go ahead and click on Configure and go into AuthPoint. Once you arrive at AuthPoint's configuration, you'll notice that I'm working with a completely fresh implementation of AuthPoint. I want to make sure that you have the resources needed to create a successful implementation for your organization. One of the first steps that you'll want to do is click on Groups and go ahead and click on Add Group. Now for the sake of this, I'm going to say Firebytes Demo. You can also include a, a group description as well from there. Next step is to create a policy. Since we haven't actually uh, created a resource, we can't add the policy. We'll come back and revisit that here shortly. The next step is uh, optional. You can customize whether or not you have safe locations. 
So safe locations are an IP address or IP address range of resources that you don't want MFA to be active on. As an example, if someone brings their laptop into the office, they won't have to do a push notification if you have the office's public IP listed here. Go ahead and click on save. Now that you have your group set up, we're gonna to wanna to create a local user. Now Offpoint can handle users in a variety of environments. So first are creating local users. The second would be either through Active Directory or uh, LDAP synchronization. And then the third option is going to include Azure Active Directory support. For this demo, we're gonna create a local user initially. So I'm gonna create an account for Jack Bloomhart. Now it's important to realize that this username is going to correlate with the username on that computer. So if it's a non-domain join computer, it needs to match exactly what's in the local user database on that computer. And don't worry, we're gonna cover Active Directory support uh, in a future session. For email, go ahead and I've set up a temporary email address for this account. Type in your email address and select your group that we previously created. Now it's important to realize as soon as I click on the save button, the user is going to get an email, two emails for local users at this email address. The first one is going to be activate the token and second one is going to ask them to set a password. So once I click on save uh, account, now that users receive those and we'll cover how to activate a token shortly. Now that you have your users and your groups in Authpoint, the next step is to create an IDP resource. An IDP resource is hosted by WatchGuard Cloud and allows you to publish SAML, uh, security assertion markup language resources on the cloud. Now don't worry, it might sound complicated, but initially we are just going to use that to verify that our users can log in and that we have a successful push notification and a request to our users. So the first step is to go to resources click on resources and select IDP portal. Click on add resource. From there, you'll be presented with two input fields. Notice these are going to be customer facing, so you're gonna want them to be applicable to your environment. So for myself, I'm just gonna choose uh, Firebytes. Now, as you notice here, the uh, access URL is dynamically changing. This has to be unique across all of Authpoint's customers. So if it's not available, just uh, choose an account alias that is available and notice that you'll actually have your customers or your employees logging into this URL. Once you're finished, click on save. So now that we've created our users, our groups, and our resources, we just need to go back to our groups and add a policy that enables them to access that resource. So go ahead and click on groups, click on the group that we just previously created, and click on add policy. From here, we're gonna select the policy of the IDP portal that we just created. And under here, we're gonna require password authentication. If we wanted to customize which authentication options were allowed, we can choose that. I'm gonna go ahead and select all three for now. Click on add. Once you're done with that, click on save. Let's go ahead and pivot to the user experience side of it. Authpoint is an app that runs on iPhone or Android. Now you can see that I have a number of different tokens through here. Most people are only gonna have one or two tokens within Authpoint. We do have a support for additional third-party tokens. I'm securing my Facebook, my Amazon account through here. And you can also see that I've customized the name and picture to help me uh, simplify the management of those tokens. Now a couple of additional features, there's a QR code reader that can be activated for or um, used for uh, doing an offline authentication into a laptop. It can also be used to manually activate tokens. We also have the um, migrate token option here. So once I click on that, we can see I wanna go ahead and migrate. Obviously, I don't wanna do that at this point, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on no. We also have a main menu that includes token security, so we can increase our security for however many tokens we want to require biometrics as well from there. As I previously mentioned, as soon as you create that user, they are going to receive an email, actually two emails. One is to activate the token and the other one is to set the password. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on um, this. And as you can see, the first step is to set the password. I'm gonna go ahead and create a password for the user, Jack. 
Now this doesn't need to be a complex password. And in fact, I'm gonna make it very simple because I am using uh, two-factor authentication from there. So I'm gonna choose password of password. Again, not a great security practice, but it doesn't need to be anything too complex. Click on save. Now it says my password has been successfully um, defined. The next step is to activate the token. So I go back and I choose the email um, that says activate token. So I click on start activation and you'll notice it uh, first and foremost gives me the ability to get the Offpoint app if I didn't already have it. So there's the link to Google Play or the App Store. I can activate the token or this is also the QR code that I can manually activate it through my email as well. Since I already have the Offpoint app on my phone, I'm gonna go ahead and click on activate. At this point, it says, do you wanna open in Offpoint? At this stage, it is activating the token and we will see the newly created token here shortly. At this point, I can go ahead and click on the three dots. That's gonna give me some additional functions. So I can click on edit token. I can select a token image under here. I'm gonna choose a picture that's appropriate for that and I'm going to name it um, appropriately. Click on save and now I have that additional token uh, modified and customized for my environment. Now I just wanna verify that my token has been activated in WatchCard Cloud. Simply go to users and click on users. There we see the username, the full name, email address, the group, and the token. From here, I can see that that token has been successfully set up, so I know I'm ready for the next step. Now, the next step is to test the IDP portal authentication. So what I wanna do is go under resources and click on the IDP portal that I previously created. I wanna go ahead and copy this URL for the IDP access, and I'm gonna go into new incognito window. This ensures that I don't have any cookies that are persistent from my previous uh, session. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. Once the web page loads, I wanna go ahead and type in the username. Click on next. And I'm gonna go, in, go ahead and type in the password for Jack, send push notification. And now you'll notice on my phone, I now have a request that came in that says, are you trying to sign in? I can click or view the details of that push notification. The username here is Jack. It gives me the location or time and location, what access portal or what IDP portal it's trying to get to. And then all I have to do is simply click on approve. Once it sends the push notification back to Authpoint, now I can see that I've successfully signed into the IDP portal.